Hi, my name is Dr. Jennifer Baylett. I'm a maternal fetal medicine specialist here at Metro Health Medical Center in Cleveland, and I run the Mother and Child Dependency Program. This program serves pregnant women with opiate use disorder. When a pregnant woman first presents with opiate use disorder, it's important to take a history. One of the most important things is to understand which drugs she's on and remembering that she may not know everything that's in her heroin as people mix in all kinds of drugs that she may not be aware of. Heroin is a, a generic term. There is, of course, a drug called heroin, but what is sold on the streets of heroin may include fentanyl or other kinds of opiates that are mixed in. And certainly other kinds of drugs are used in the quote unquote cut. Because heroin on the street can be cut with many things, it's important to ask how much she's spending a day rather than how much weight. $50 a day habit is a fairly small habit. On the other hand, a $300 a day habit would be a very large habit, and obviously there's a range in between. Also ask people how many times a day they are injecting or snorting. That's also helpful in understanding their entire drug use profile. Once you understand which drug she's taking, it's important to understand which route she's taking them through because that affects her risks. Patients can smoke, snort, or shoot heroin, and you can also smoke pills. So if somebody tells you they're smoking a pill, that is possible. When it comes to shooting, it's also important to ask where they're shooting. It's important to look for the track marks and assess are there any signs of soft tissue infection. It's also important to look for any signs of endocarditis, splinter hemorrhages in the fingers, listening to the heart. You can be surprised at where patients may shoot drugs, and it's important to ask them where they're last shooting and look at their most recent track marks. Unusual places that pregnant women sometimes shoot are breasts, groins, necks, any place with a big vessel, even arteries. The other place and thing to think about is something called skin popping. When people run out of veins, they just inject sub-Q. That can also cause some fairly horrendous abscesses. So make sure you ask somebody how they're shooting their drugs. Next, you also want to ask how they're cleaning their skin if they're shooting drugs and where they're getting their needles and works, and are they works meaning syringes, and also are they sharing those with anybody else. Ideally, of course, you would use a fresh needle every time with a fresh syringe and not share with anybody. Anytime you see somebody using drugs uh, and reusing needles or uh, sharing needles, it's important to point out that there's uh, typically needle exchanges in many places or other ways to stay safer while they're shooting. Uh, to try to decrease the risk to the fetus and of infection. Sometimes it's the uh, infections that can be as bad for fetus as the drugs themselves. One of the important things to do when you ask about opiate use disorder is to ask what other uh, illegal drugs she may be taking. Uh, cocaine is um, very common. Now patients don't always know they're on cocaine. Sometimes it's mixed in with the heroin and they may not even know it. The other medication that's particularly important is benzos, uh, benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepine withdrawal can be fatal and it's important to treat that separately uh, and score a withdrawal score for benzos separately. So make sure you ask and make sure you double check the drug screen that benzos are not a part of that because that requires special handling above and beyond what we can discuss here today. It's important to understand what drugs are actually being sold in the heroin in your community and to also understand what the is being tested for in your hospital's drug screen or your laboratory's drug screen. Many times fentanyl is what's being sold on the street but is not necessarily included in a hospital drug screen and it's important to know that so you can order it separately if need be. Every once in a while a patient who says she's using and may even have track marks will have a toxicology screen that is negative. This is important because there are synthetic opiates on the street that we always don't know what they are um, and, and she may still honestly be in withdrawal. Um, at that point it's smart to talk to your laboratory and your toxicologist to see if any extended screening can be done. Once you've assessed and done the counseling for um, hepatitis C and HIV, the next thing to do is a what we call a COW score, a clinical opiate withdrawal score, to see how uh, much withdrawal the patient is currently in. Now, COW score, clinical opiate withdrawal score, are available on the web. You can uh, look it up um, and score the patient. Scoring is the higher the score, the worse the withdrawal, and that will help you in your next steps towards treatment. So now we're going to talk about counseling a woman. Typically in pregnancy, we don't recommend that somebody quit drugs uh, cold turkey or just stop suddenly. Um, when patients go into sudden withdrawal, um, they can feel quite sick. Uh, if they're viable and further along, there is some association with preterm labor, although that's a weaker association. I think the 
biggest issue is that when people go cold turkey, they relapse. Up to 70% of people will relapse if they just go cold turkey. Uh, and when people relapse, they have an increased risk of overdose, we know from the general literature. For all those reasons, when a pregnant woman is uh, presenting with opiate use disorder, we recommend that she go on buprenorphine or methadone. Now, those two drugs have various risk profiles. Um, buprenorphine is typically a little safer for the baby in pregnancy, um, but is not as good for people with a very expensive drug has or a very heavy drug habit. Methadone quells the cravings better, but has a risk profile that's uh, more concerning with many more interactions with other drugs and an increased risk for overdose and misuse. The other thing is you need to know who your local drug treatment uh, centers are in your area and what's available in your area. Either one is acceptable, you just need to know what's available and who you have contacts with in your area. It's important for the patient to know that the medication alone is not enough. She needs drug treatment, uh, and that involves uh, intensive uh, either outpatient or inpatient, depending on what's best for the patient. She should expect to be uh, in drug treatment for multiple hours a day for multiple weeks uh, before she can graduate to the next step. Anytime a pregnant woman is started on buprenorphine or methadone, it's important to counsel them on the risks to the fetus as well as the risks to the mother. Um, both of the drugs carry a risk of something called neonatal abstinence syndrome, or essentially the baby withdrawing at the time of delivery. We don't say that the baby is uh, addicted. That's an important difference. The baby addiction is a psychological term. Dependence is a physiological uh, happening. And so the babies do go through withdrawal. Withdrawal, if not treated in a baby, can be dangerous, and so those babies need to be watched for several days in a hospital setting. The local protocol will tell you for how long and treatment of the baby if needed. Many babies go to the NICUs. In other areas, they stay with the mother. That's all dependent on your local hospital protocols. But it is important for moms to know that roughly 40 to 60 percent of the time, babies will be born dependent on the medications. These um, babies who are born dependent it's not necessarily dose dependent on how much mom was taking. It's a random thing. We can't, we can't predict which babies are going to be born dependent. So it's important to tell the patients up front as early as possible that children's services will be called at the time of delivery. It's important to empower the pregnant woman to know that if she does everything she's supposed to, that increases her chance that she will get to parent. But of course, you cannot make any promises. Children's services is separate from hospitals and doctors, and you do not speak for children's services. Around the time of delivery is particularly challenging for women with opiate use disorder. There are several challenges that occur. One is the woman who comes in in acute withdrawal during labor. It's hard to want to start her on something when she's in the middle of labor, either buprenorphine or methadone. Sometimes short-acting opiates can be used in labor just to help mom stay through the withdrawal until the delivery has happened, rather than starting somebody on uh, buprenorphine or methadone during labor, which is a longer process. It's important never to use Nubane or other mixed agonist antagonist drugs for pain control during labor because they can precipitate acute withdrawal, which can be dangerous for both mother and baby during labor. After labor is also a challenge. In general, if somebody's had a vaginal delivery, we recommend that she not get narcotics. Obviously, if she's had a, a fourth degree tear or a hematoma or something that's particularly painful, it's, it's fine to give opiates. Uh, but we typically would not send somebody home with opiates unless um, it's extraordinary circumstances. Especially if somebody's on buprenorphine, pain control after cesarean can be quite challenging. I won't go through all of it in this short video. Needless to say, there are protocols and um, papers written on this. Please know that it's a challenge and it's okay to use opiates uh, in the postpartum period after a cesarean if need be. Typically, we would ask that if you send somebody home with opiates, that they go home also with a letter for their provider, so with their, for their drug treatment provider, so the drug treatment provider knows that those are legitimate uh, narcotics. In some areas, the drug treatment provider may not care if they're legal or illegal and just say that she can't have it. Patients need to be mentally prepared to go home on Motrin and Tylenol if that's the case in your local area. Um, additionally, it's always a good idea if you do send somebody home on narcotics to send the narcotics home with a family member who can take control of the narcotics so that the patient doesn't have unfettered access to the uh, opiates themselves, that she's got another responsible person who can help her take the correct amount as prescribed. Mm -hmm. The last challenging situation is the patient who has got opiate use disorder and has no intention of stopping during pregnancy. In this case, um, there's not much to do except to work on harm reduction. In this case, I give a talk on 
how to um, take drugs more safely. So making sure she cleans her skin with alcohol if she's shooting up, making sure that she doesn't share needles or syringes, that she has clean syringes and needles from a needle exchange or another source. Anything that can be done for harm reduction, if she will um, snort and sort of shoot, that's also an important thing, but anything to decrease the risk of her drug use habit is important, especially during pregnancy. Patients often ask how long they need to stay on buprenorphine or methadone. Typically, I tell patients to wait until the baby's sleeping through the night because it's very difficult to withdraw and have a newborn. Patients are often very anxious to get off, and obviously that, in conjunction with her drug treatment doctor, may be a possibility. But in general, we wait till the um, mother is um, out of the postpartum period and uh, stable in her recovery. Also, as part of harm reduction, it's important to consider a naloxone uh, or a Narcan um, kit to give to patients uh, at home. Those, pa those kits can be given to family members or to the patient, and it's important even if she's not using or she says she's not using because she may be uh, in a community where others are using. So depending on how your local Narcan kits or naloxone kits can be obtained, it's important to try to get, uh, get those for a patient. It can sometimes be difficult for a provider to have a conversation about drug use with a pregnant woman. It's important to stay neutral, to be respectful. She's trying very hard, uh, typically, to be a good parent, and it needs help in overcoming her illness. In the same way that we would never turn away a diabetic because she ate a candy bar, we wouldn't turn away a pregnant woman for having opiate use disorder. It is a remitting, relapsing disease, and you may have somebody who gets clean and then comes back uh, having uh, relapsed again, it's important to just stay patient and continue to give her the best care that you can provide. Other resources can be found at opqc.net, that's opqc.net, and that stands for the Ohio Perinatal Quality Collaborative. They have extensive information of what to do with a patient who presents with opiate use disorder, either in clinic or in labor, and also how to handle things postpartum.